The snow is still coming down in the state line. We're live at some busy intersections in the four city to show you the latest road conditions. Plus Rockford plows have started to clear residential streets. The Public Works Department offers some tips on the best ways to stay safe while on the road. And Rockford police release body cam footage from a fatal shooting. The ongoing investigation into the death of a 29 year old man. Live from WTVO 17. This is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. The snow continues to come down across the state line. Now let's check back in with Candace for our total so far and when we can see improving conditions. Well, you know, the warm pavement temperatures as the snow came down really did have an impact on some of those totals, along with the compaction of the snow. A lot of times when you get a heavy, wet snow, it compacts, so it reduces those snow totals, which is something we kind of discussed a bit uh, throughout much of the evening and into the overnight hours yesterday. But we are still going to pick up another couple inches of snow here as we head throughout the next few hours as we get some heavier bursts of snow to kind of work in across the area. That is not going to change. The impact however, have been there and they've been rather great across much of the region, especially when we started to see that snow pick up an in intensity mid to late morning and then carry over into this afternoon. Visibility for time across the board was all below one mile. Some improvements in Rockford, Janesville, Monroe, same thing down in Sterling, but still under a mile out in Galena, Rochelle and through DeKalb. So with the snow coming down, there's been a lot of snow and slush covered roads across the region as our temperatures have been in the low 30s. We've actually bumped that number up to 34 here in Rockford and that will continue as we go throughout this evening. In fact, we'll continue to see some issues with some blowing and drifting snow too. Now, as we go through this evening, we'll see the winds pick up and that'll carry over into tomorrow. So still some slick conditions possible as we look through tomorrow morning. But again, the snow will gradually taper off as we get closer to midnight. The first the Warren weather team has been out throughout the region to check on the road conditions, and that's where we find meteorologist Jordan Wolf, who joins, joins us now. He is out at Winnebago Corners. Jordan, how's it looking and how are the roads out there? Yeah, well, Candace, the roads really aren't that bad, especially with some of these main roads that get plowed a little bit more frequently. When you look at the parking lot in the gas station next to us, it's a little bit of a different story where snow has started to build back up just recently. However, the main roads, not really all that bad, for the most part, just looking wet. But we are starting to see a little bit more of the wind picking up, as you started to hint at there a moment ago. And that wind really helping to at least drive some of these more fine snowflakes that are still falling from the sky. Not really seeing any blowing and drifting going on at the moment, but that may become a little bit more of a concern here later on into the evening. The snow that we are dealing with, this really thick, compact, real good packing snow that we see where we can really build kind of a snowman with this type of snow. And that's the type of snow that we've seen throughout the afternoon and even into the evening. And that's what we're going to continue to see going forward. This type of snow, really, really low liquid or snow to liquid ratio. And that's why it's a very wet kind of heavy snow. And that's allowing for these roads to potentially remain a little bit clearer, at least early on, because as the snow falls very close to that freezing mark, and that melts it a little bit quicker, at least initially before we get some of those heavier bands that work their way through. And that's when we start to see those snow accumulate a little bit more on the roadways, at least a little bit longer. But right now we are still holding on to a little bit more of those winds starting to feel a little bit cooler out. So we're going to kind of go ahead and get back into our cars and get a little bit warm. But for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Mimi. That sounds like a good plan. All right. Thanks for that live report, Jordan. The city of Rockford asked drivers to have patience as they clear the roads. Contractors have begun plowing residential streets. It takes more than 140 snow plows between 12 to 14 hours to clear neighborhoods. Once roads are cleared, the Public Works fleet will begin to salt. Rockford's director of Public Works says it's best to take your time if you have to be out on the roads. Please be patient. Um, it's going to be messy. Um, you are going to be delayed in terms of getting to your destination if you do choose to go out. Um, so please be patient. Um, the other big reminder is don't follow too closely behind our plow trucks. Give them room um, so that our guys and gals can do their jobs. Um, it's hard enough navigating in the snow, let alone um, controlling all that equipment and, and plowing. Public Works warns if cars are parked on both sides of your street, it may not get salted. 
The city of Rockford has a reminder. A snow emergency declaration is in effect. That means odd even parking is in place. Today, vehicles have to be parked on the odd address side of the street. You have to move your car to the even side of the street by 8 in the morning tomorrow. Not following the rule could get you a $60 ticket. City of Rockford says don't assume you can park your car wherever you want once your street is plowed. That's only the case after City Hall lifts the snow emergency. We've got all the information you need to know about the first major snowfall of the season. That includes road conditions and any snow emergencies and closings. You can get those updates on our website, mystateline.com, and through the First Warn Weather app. A Stateline task force is investigating after a fatal officer-involved shooting in Rockford last month. Today, police released body cam video from the encounter. On Christmas Eve, two Rockford police officers were called to an apartment on Charles Street near UW Health Swedish American. A 911 caller reported a neighbor was saying, help me and kill me repeatedly. Police gained access to his apartment and found Patrick Kirby with a knife and a box cutter in his hands. After refusing to drop both, Officer Michael Ryan fired three shots. Kirby died a short time later. The Winnebago Boone County Integrity Task Force is investigating. A Rockford man is in custody after crashing into a police squad car. Around midnight Sunday, our PD officers saw a car driving near Auburn and North Johnston Avenue. The car had taken off from police earlier that evening. Officers tried to pull the car over. They say the driver put it in reverse and crashed into an approaching unmarked squad car. According to investigators, Jamarki Boos was the driver. Police say Boos jumped into the passenger seat and hid a loaded handgun before officers removed him from the vehicle. They took him into custody. He is in the Winnebago County Jail. Boos faces several charges, including being an armed habitual criminal. Well, the roads are wet and slippery. Up next, we are live at another busy Rockford area intersection, checking in on road conditions. And coming up at 6, snow plows are clearing roads all across the state line. We'll hear from one local driver about the challenges of the job. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Leber, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Our weather team is spread out across the state line to check on road conditions. Savannah Brito is at East State and Mulford in Rockford. Savannah, how's it look? Yeah, thanks, Eric, Mimi. We're out right now, East State and Mulford. Traffic's still taking it pretty easy or slow, so that's what I would suggest going forward if you do have to be out on the roadways and travel. Not the best of conditions. Obviously, they were quickly deteriorating and still continue to do so. Both Wisconsin Department of Transportation and Illinois Department of Transportation are still at this point, up to this point, reporting, reporting mostly to partially covered roadways, more so mostly to even uh, snow covered roadways across pretty much every county across the state line. I would say that the worst of that kind of directly west of here, also Lee and Ogle County reporting completely covered roadways. That's not necessarily due to ice. Temperatures have been hovering around freezing level even slightly above it pretty much all day today. So it's more so that thick, heavy, wet snow that we've been seeing, and that's kind of led to some compaction out there on the roadways. So, you know, that sloppy mess or slush out there. Like I mentioned, we're just at the corner or intersection of East State and Mulford, so traffic not going right now. They're coming up to a stop because, like, there we go. So if you look towards the roadways, you can kind of see that cars are obviously a little bit slower than on a normal day and the wet roadways it's not only due to slush and snow but also they're just wet in general and temperatures are going to fall overnight so obviously anything that's still on the roadways there'll be plenty of slick spots out there so just avoid traveling tonight if you can stay inside and at home also you want to allow extra time both tonight and tomorrow morning with the falling temperatures. But for now, I'm meteorologist Savannah Brito reporting. Like I mentioned, eat state and Mulford. We'll head back inside and toss it into you, Eric Mimi. All right, Savannah, thanks for that live report. And that winter weather is expected to stick with us throughout the evening. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from Candace on when we can expect to see the snow begin to taper off. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. 
been a little messy out there across southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Some slick conditions as the snow continues to come down, although we are starting to see that lighten up in a couple of spots. When we look from north, south, east to west, visibility is still down and the wind is starting to pick up too. You can see the snow covered ground down here in Rochelle. Roads uh, wet for sure and where we haven't necessarily had a plow go through, they're starting to pick back up with that snow and slush accumulation. So the slick conditions will still be there. I guess our saving grace has been the temperatures have been above freezing for this whole entire event, which really did cut back on some of the snow totals. As the snow came down, it really did melt once it hit the con uh, pavement as well as grassy surfaces. It wasn't really until we started to see that intensity build back up mid to late morning and throughout the afternoon that we really started to see that accumulation and the impacts there felt on the road. So while our snow totals have been down from what we initially thought yesterday, Day, the impacts were still there. So far, I've received anywhere from two up to six inches of snowfall. The higher amounts uh, focused over northwest Illinois, where believe it or not, just a degree or two difference in temperature meant the difference of uh, that snow accumulating a little more. We still do have some snow falling, although here from Rockford down south, you may actually get some breaks or it may even seem like kind of a fine mist or drizzle in some spots. While we go further to the southwest from Milledgeville down through Sterling, and we've got some heavy pockets of snow that kind of rotating in around low pressure. So that'll pass to the south as we go throughout the next several hours. So there are still going to be some bursts of some heavier snowfall uh, in some spots as we go through this evening. But a lot of this begins to wrap up once we get closer to mid uh, midnight. So the heavy wet snow will taper off and it's been a really heavy sloppy snow too because our temperatures have been anywhere from 31, 32 all the way up to 34 degrees. Snow and slush covered roads, especially ones that maybe haven't been plowed or you've got um, back roads, county roads, country roads, things like that. Reduced visibility, slick conditions and there is going to be some blowing and drifting. On my way in earlier today in the open and rural areas, I did notice that taking place despite just how heavy that snow was. So the impacts are still going to be there as we go throughout the rest of this evening. Moderate impacts for tomorrow morning, although I think that does taper down as that snow does come to an end. When we time this out on future cast, 8 o'clock tonight, we're starting to see the back edge of those snow showers work in. Maybe a couple of flurries lingering once we get into tomorrow morning. A little break from some of the activity, but we'll maintain the cloud cover. Next system, it's a quick moving clipper system. Brings us 1 to 2 inches of snowfall. Notice our temperatures, though, are colder in the 20s. So a little more of a dry snow and that will stick again you've got about one to two inches of snow coming up with that so it could be some slick conditions going into thursday morning break from that then we've got our next system that comes in here by the time we get in towards the end of the week this one a deeper low pressure system and i think will have more of an impact as far as the wind is concerned our winds have been gusting here uh, close to 40 miles per hour sustained winds from the north we've seen that as we've gone throughout the day and our wind gusts will stay around 35 miles per hour through tonight and into tomorrow morning. We're 27 for tonight, so anything that is wet may become slick, although you've got the wind, so that does help just a little bit. 30 for tomorrow, 28 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the one I am watching, regardless of snow. I mean, it is potentially going to be a, a significant system with that, but regardless of that, guys, the important thing to kind of know with this is the wind. I think the wind really picks up with that deepening low pressure system. And even if, if you get some light snow, that is really going to cause some uh, significant impacts going into Friday evening. And then you've got the cold right behind that. Candace, big thanks to you and the whole weather team for keeping us updated on this winter storm. Wisconsin next with sports. Will a national championship at Michigan mean it's time for Jim Harbaugh to return to the NFL? And will Chicago be his destination? Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Jim Harbaugh now has a national championship for the college team he once quarterback. Does he have a desire to coach his former NFL team, the Bears, to a Super Bowl championship? Football world is his oyster right now. He is the man. As much as he wants to soak in Michigan's win last night, there are likely lots of NFL teams eager to talk to him and try to woo him back to the pro game. Perhaps the Bears are one of them. It's been all quiet today at Hallis Hall. No movement in any direction by Ryan Poles and Kevin Williams on the coaching staff. 
If ever there was a time for Harbaugh to jump back to the NFL, this seems to be it. He can't get any better than a 15-0 record and a championship in the college game. You're chasing perfection, and it's hard to be perfect, and rarely, rarely comes around. Um, and you hope to achieve excellence along the way, but gosh, yeah, it was perfect. It was uh, perfect 15 and 0. Well, the Blackhawks have a game tonight at home against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. McDavid is tied for fifth in the NHL in scoring. The Blackhawks are getting some bodies healthy and back on the ice. Former Ice Hog Joey Anderson has been cleared to play, so has Taylor Radish. Their good health has lifted the spirits of the rest of the guys. I think there was a lot of excitement in the dress room and on the ice today, so I'm, uh, I think the guys feel it. Like our, you know, our team's getting healthier, and uh, you know, I mean, guys were running on some uh, fumes over the last few games, especially up front. So uh, it's really nice to have some bodies back, and uh, I think the guys are all embracing that. And since the Blackhawks are getting guys back, that is a trickle-down effect for the Ice Hawks. Defenseman Louis Crevier is being sent back to Rockford. The Ice Hogs have called off their practice this morning because of the snow. They will play in Grand Rapids this weekend. Forward David Gust has been Mr. Reliable for them again this season. Their leading score from last season is leading the team again in goals, assists, and points. Gust also has three game-winning goals. He is a stabilizing presence for the entire team. Yeah, he's a great, great uh, leader uh, both on the ice and off the ice. Uh, his uh, knack for scoring those big goals are obviously key, right? Uh, we trust him a lot in a lot of different situations. Um, so I think he's a good liaison for all of us uh, in the room, being the staff as well. That's sports. We'll be right back. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. We've got the snow as it comes down, although in a couple of spots it is we've kind of lightened up a bit. We will still see some pockets of some moderate snow come down as temperatures tonight will drop down to 27. Another round of snow, one to two inches late Wednesday into early Thursday. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.